This is New Cab News with Lauren Poland. Good evening and thank you very much for joining us. Weeks of heavy rain have wreaked havoc on the border city. From flooded basements to overflowing sewers, residents and the city are now picking up the pieces. Barpadiasic has the details. This was the scene yesterday as commuters tried to make their way home following a brief but heavy rainfall. Most low-lying areas were affected and a few sewers could not take the load. City officials are assuring people that the sewer backups are normal and expected for the rainfall we have received, twice as much in a month than the average. Obviously when you have that and when almost half of that comes in one day, there is going to be issues within the system. The city doesn't feel there is a need for an overhaul of the current sewer system. We're always upgrading our, our storm systems. We're doing it uh, last year. We did a major upgrade along 25th Street uh, going into the Saskatchewan side um, that connects into Lake J. This year we're doing another storm upgrade on Highway 16 in conjunction with the roadworks there. Sewer backup claims are down on the Saskatchewan side to 19 this year, compared to 36 same time last year. According to an insurance broker we spoke to, that's because a lot of people are more aware of their policies than ever before. People know what the coverages are, they know uh, what is expected of them. Uh, insurance companies now charge a high premium for sewer backup, so there's lots of um, conditions that go on. You have to have your back water valve. If you've ever had a claim before, it's really hard to get um, sewer backup coverage on a policy. Beck has some advice for homeowners worried about water damage in the future. Make sure that the lot that your house is on is secure. Make sure that uh, your drainage is away, the water drainage is away from your house. Make sure that your weeping tile and your downspouts are not attached to your sewer, which some of them still are, if you can believe it. Bart Pediasic, Newcap News. The Lloydminster RCMP is investigating a hit and run earlier this afternoon, but the collision isn't quite what you'd expect. Police are investigating reports of a truck crashing into a condo. The details are sparse, but the truck allegedly backed into the house, then drove off through the alley. The cost of damages are still unknown, and so far there are no reports of injuries. As we first told you yesterday, 44th Street heading eastbound is down to one lane due to a major construction project. To ease congestion, wide loads are being forced to detour. 44th Street between 45th and 50th Avenue is undergoing a two-phase project. City officials say the detour is needed because the area crews are working in is quite tight. Just for uh, uh, safety reasons, um, going through the narrow sections uh, of the construction between 45th Avenue and 50th Avenue and Highway 16, it's just uh, we can't handle those, those wide loads through that sections. We've got some pre-warning signs on both ends of the city and uh, hopefully they'll self-enforce themselves. Westbound truckers can exit onto 40th Avenue and can use either 12th Street or 67th Street. Those heading eastbound can exit onto 75th Street using those same detours. The city says semi trucks do not fall into the wide load category and can still travel on Highway 16. This phase of construction should be complete by the middle of August. Alberta Health Services is reminding people that it's once again time to protect against West Nile virus. Mike Baden looks into what people can do to fight the bite. Summer is all about enjoying the outdoors. Unfortunately, it also brings exposure to mosquitoes, some of which carry West Nile virus, so people should try their best to avoid being bitten at all. Well, the most important thing, as I've always mentioned, is prevention. So when you go out and you even suspect there's going to be mosquitoes, um, if you want the sun uh, and you want a tan, make sure you also have some DEET. Uh, products that contain DEET and you apply them on the exposed skin. But if you are bitten, there are a couple things to look out for. Well, the one that carries West Nile, it takes a while, is an incubation period and then you do get symptoms. Most of them are mild symptoms and disappear, but there is a small percentage where you can have headaches. And an even smaller percentage of those with headaches can go on to get symptoms of meningitis and weakness of the limbs, etc. In 2011, 102 cases of West Nile virus were confirmed in Canada, although no cases were reported in Alberta. 
Along with the normal bug sprays, there is a wide variety of over-the-counter supplies that can help fight the bite. I like the insect defend patches um, or the off uh, clips. The insect defend patches are nice, especially if you're going to be outside for an extended period of time. They last up to 36 hours and it's just a patch that you apply to your skin um, on your back or somewhere inconspicuous. And whether you're at the lake, golfing, or in the garden, if the proper precautions are taken, there is nothing to worry about. There's a good chance nothing will happen with West Nile. It's only 20% of people who have, who have West Nile who show symptoms. Mike Baden, Newcap News.